Hello and welcome to another quick tech tip with the Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, we'll be going over how to integrate Husqvarna Auto Mower Robot Lawn Mower into Home Assistant. We'll also be going over an automation I have set up that helps protect my auto mower from being ruined by bad weather. This integration does require an internet connection to function and will only work with auto mowers that have auto mower connect functionality. It will not work with any auto mower that only has Bluetooth connectivity. To get started, first install the integration through the Home Assistant Community Store or manually. I recommend using the Community Store, and we'll be using that method for this video. I will not be covering how to install the Home Assistant Community Store or how to install the auto mower integration manually. Instead, I will have links for how to do both in the description below. To install via the Home Assistant Community Store, navigate to Hacks, and select Integrations. Next, click on Explore and Download Repositories, and search for Husqvarna. Next, click on the Auto Mower Integration in the Add Repository pop-up. You'll be brought to the information page for the integration, where you can see installation steps, configuration steps, and some other useful information. Click on Download at the bottom right-hand side of the screen, and then click on Download on the pop-up that opens. Once the download is completed, the pop-up will disappear, but you still need to restart Home Assistant for it to be available for setup. To do this, click on Settings, and then the three-dot menu at the top right-hand side of the screen. Next, click on Restart Home Assistant, click on Restart Home Assistant again on the pop-up, and click on Restart on the second pop-up. Home Assistant will then take several minutes to restart. While we wait for Home Assistant to finish restarting, open a new tab and navigate to developer.huskvarnagroup.cloud to set up a developer account. As long as you already have a Husqvarna account that would be used to log into the app to control your robot lawnmower, you can click on Login. If you don't have that set up yet, I recommend finishing the initial setup of your lawnmower before continuing on with the integration. On the login page, enter in the email and password you use to log into the Automower app. When prompted, authorize access to the developer portal. Next, click on New Application. Here enter in a name for the application and update the redirect URL. I'll have the URL for you to copy and paste in the description below. Once all set, click on Create. Copy and save both the application key and application secret into Notepad for later use, and then click on Connect New API. On the pop-up, click on Connect under Authentication API, and then click on Connect New API once more. This time on the pop-up, click on Connect under Automower Connect API. Now that Home Assistant should be finished restarting, go back to it and click on Devices and Services under Settings. Next, click on Add Integration and search for Husqvarna Auto Mower. Then click on it to initiate setup. After a few moments, a pop-up should appear asking for you to add in credentials. Under Name, enter in the same name you used to create your application on the developer portal, and enter in the key and secret that we saved in Notepad earlier. Once all set, click on Add. A new window should open up asking for you to authorize Home Assistant with your Husqvarna account. Click Allow to continue. Doing so will bring you to the Home Assistant OAuth page to link your Home Assistant account. Click on Link Account. Back on Home Assistant, a success page should be shown listing all the robot lawnmowers tied to your account that you can assign to an area. You can click on Finish when you are all done. Navigating to the device page for the robot lawnmower, we can see several different points of information such as the state of the auto mower, battery level, next start time, and even the number of charge cycles it's been through. You're also able to control starting and stopping the auto mower from the devices page if you want. And you can even send your auto mower back to the dock to charge. While it's fun to be able to control the auto mower this way, I personally don't have much use for it. Instead, I had this integration so that I could have my lawn mower cutting the grass and parking based on the weather. Even though my robot lawn mower is water resistant, I don't want to have it cutting the grass if it's soaking wet. And I don't want it running when there's a thunderstorm or high winds. So with the help of another integration utilizing my backyard weather station, I'm able to park and resume my auto mower cutting the lawn based on if it's raining, if it's too windy, or if it's storming. Within the rule, I have several different triggers, each with their own trigger ID that's later used for actions. Every trigger is for my weather station detecting a weather event and includes things like it being too hot or too cold to cut the grass, if average wind speed or wind gusts get too fast, and if it's raining or hailing. I also want to add in lightning detection based on how close lightning is detected and how often a lightning strike is detected. But I haven't had a thunderstorm recently enough to test it out, so I've left it out of this automation for this video. The trigger name should be pretty self-explanatory, but this one will trigger when my weather station detects the temperature going over 85 degrees Fahrenheit. 
while this one will trigger when wind gust speeds go above 30 miles per hour. And this trigger is for when the precipitation type changes to none and stays that way for 15 minutes. As can be seen, each trigger has its own unique trigger ID that is then utilized within the many if blocks in the action section of the automation. The first if-then block will be evaluated as true if the trigger ID for the triggering event is either for it being too cold or too hot. If it's either, the lawnmower will be parked, and then depending on which trigger ID, a corresponding input helper will be turned on to indicate the current weather state. The second if-then block is evaluated as true if the trigger ID for the trigger event is either for if it's no longer too hot or too cold. When this happens, both of the input helpers for temperature tracking are turned off, and an additional check is performed to see if it's okay for the lawnmower to return to its normal cutting schedule. This check will make sure that all nine of the input helpers I have for weather tracking are in an off state. As long as they all are, the automower can start mowing again based on its scheduled time. If even just one is still in an on state, the mower cannot start yet, because the weather conditions have not improved enough. The other four if-then blocks do similar checks and actions, but for if there is rain or hail, and if the wind gust speed and average wind speed are too high. When I add in my lightning detection, I'll have a few more triggers to add as well as additional if-then blocks under my actions. I also want to add in rain amount tracking so that way if there was heavy rain for an extended period of time, the robot lawnmower won't be released too soon, which could be a problem if the ground hasn't fully dried enough yet. I'd love to know what other ways you might use the automower integration with Home Assistant so make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up so that YouTube will share it with others. And if you aren't already, consider subscribing to the channel and enabling notifications to be one of the first to know when I release other smart home related videos just like this one. Thank you for watching, and as always, happy automating.